Hi, my name is Nicholas Frayson. I'm the lead author of the study Cognitive Training for Technical and Non-Technical Skills in Robotic Surgery Randomized Control Trial, which has very kindly been selected as Article of the Week by the BGAUI. The principal aim of this study was to evaluate the effectiveness of a cognitive tool known as motor imagery in robotic surgical training. In the field of high-level sports, every sportsman and competitor worth this thought across all disciplines routinely use cognitive tools in their training, particularly motor imagery training, which can be defined as the mental rehearsal or mental simulation of a task without physically performing it, is used to train specific skills. In contrast to this, whilst a number of studies have evaluated motor imagery training in surgery, it has yet to be formally integrated into the surgical curriculum. A major problem with it so far is that a number of the studies have shown poor outcomes and their methodology is extremely heterogeneous. And one thing we know from our metal rehearsal motor imagery research to date is that it's only effective if it's done properly. We therefore undertook the first randomized control trial of cognitive training robotic surgery using evidence-based imagery techniques. A single blinded randomized control trial was conducted in the Vatikusi Institute of Surgery at King's College London. 64 novice robotic surgeons completed a program of basic robotic training on a da Vinci virtual reality simulator. They were then randomized to motor imagery training or control. Both groups were given didactic training on how to perform a urethral cycle anastomosis. The cognitive training arm then underwent motor imagery according to the validated PETLET model, whilst the control arm was shown a further video of simulated UVA anastomosis being performed. Assessment was undertaken in the third session. All participants completed a urethrocycle anastomosis on a synthetic model in a high fidelity simulated operating room environment. During the assessment, not only was their technical skill tested, but they were exposed to a number of increasingly difficult non technical skill scenarios, for example, the patient becoming unstable, which were used to assess their non technical skills. Just, I'm, I'm noticing a little drop in blood pressure. Hey. Oh, what's that? Performances were then recorded on video and reviewed post hoc by expert surgeons and non technical skills experts blinded to their training status. Technical skill was assessed using gears and notes was used for the non technical skills assessment, both validated assessment tools. Imagery ability was assessed using the movement imagery questionnaire. Pair protocol analysis of the 62 participants who completed the study showed that motor imagery training resulted in a significantly higher gear score of 13.1 compared to the mean score of 11.4 in the control group. This was further supported by significantly higher movement imagery questionnaire scores for the motor imagery training arm. In comparison, there was no difference in the non-technical skills scores between the two groups. This study has shown that when performed properly, motor imagery training is effective in technical skills development, although there is no evidence that it is effective in non-technical skills. Previous systematic reviews of motor imagery in surgery have highlighted both variations in methodologies and outcomes. This study clearly shows that when using evidence-based techniques, such as the PETLET model, motor imagery can be effective for technical skills training. Teaching surgeons how to effectively utilize motor imagery within their current training programs will help to promote further improvements in surgical training. Many thanks for your interest in our study.